Hello everybody, welcome to Journal Pages. I'm Nola and I'm the owner of Lacuna Moon, uh, an avid self-care, self-compassion journaling brand. I um, have Kat here to thank for the name of this podcast and for encouraging me to start it. So um, before I've even introdu introduced you, this is Kat, if you want to say a bit about yourself. Um, hi, and uh, yeah, no worries. Um, I'm really good at sometimes bringing up random names, but never for my own stuff. Oh, yeah. um, so I'm grateful <laughs> <laughs> for that. Um, but yeah, hi, um, my name's Kat. My pronouns are they, them, and I'm an artist, writer, gamer, and creating a uh, content creator, um, and all round kind of like creative person, really. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, um, my main kind of brand that I'm known for is Kitty Creates Rainbows um okay. but there's kind of shoots from that so yeah fabulous multifaceted as are most creatives I find yes yeah. big time <laughs> so we're here to talk about journaling um so to start with how how did you kind of get into it like was there a person or a time or something that kind of got you started with it YouTube so yeah. I I always had a diary so ever since I was a kid I've always had a diary mm -hmm. um and I didn't really think of it as journaling when yeah. you're a kid. It's just like, you. I don't know about you, but Your I diary had, today. Like, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> very much that. And mine, I had even had the ones with the little locks on and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But I'd always diaried. Yeah. Um, and then when I started working, I left school um, at 16 started working straight away. Um, I also moved out on my own, so I had to kind of be very organized very quickly. Mm -hmm. And one of my work colleagues said, get a Filofax, this is back then. Oh, wow, so, yes. I remember the Filofax phase. Yeah, a Filofax. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did, and I got a Filofax. And then kind of 2000s hit, and the dawning of YouTube, mm -hmm. and I kind of moved from using a Filofax to more of a planner but it wasn't this was pre kind of Erin Condren and yeah. all of those planners um it was just more of a big planner that I got mm -hmm. from Smith's I think yeah um, and just use one of those so I had like my little file of facts and then had my big planner um and then yeah I found someone who was talking about Erin Condren's on YouTube and just yeah. went wow find me up <laughs> pretty this much the same timeline <laughs> it oh, was Erin really? Condren really that dived me right into the world of YouTube planning yeah but pretty similar yeah. I, I had a similar so kind of beautiful thing. like so, uh, mm -hmm. some people had the most beautiful spreads and I just mm -hmm. thought I really want that my diary yeah. as I was calling it back <laughs> then was so mm -hmm. dull yeah just pen and paper just <laughs> <laughs> so boring <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's kind of how I got into it and then just developed from there so mm -hmm. it was I, I started off with Erin Condren planners and then I discovered about bullet journaling and then mm -hmm. just kind of moved on from there yeah. and now I have lots of different things for different aspects I feel like it is you you find the one and then it's kind of like a what's the term I'm looking for like a a gateway yeah into an, a huge world which perfect seg segue here because the next thing I was going to ask was about what kind of journaling you do because I know whenever people say journaling there's um everybody has an idea of what it is in their head but unless yeah. you're in it and you kind of are part of this community I don't think you people maybe nearly realize quite how many options there are no <laughs> um so as I said started off with Erin Condren planners mm -hmm. so that was very much planners it was planning out and I was doing forward planning I wasn't doing what a lot of other people who do use Erin Condren's where they actually do back planning I can't yeah, remember like what memory they're... planning I think or memory, memory... yeah memory keeping yeah something. It... I used to just plan forward and I've always planned forward mm -hmm. um so I discovered bullet, bullet journaling from that and then with bullet journaling similar to Erin Condren there's so many people doing loads of different stuff mm -hmm. I thought I don't really know what I want to do. So I kind of tried everything. Mm -hmm. So now I have, um, I've got my, up oh, there literally here. So I've got my um, morning pages, which is my diary kind of, um, get get all the scramble out of my head, brain dump yep. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I have. And then I have my personal diary separate to that, which mm -hmm. I also write in. Um, I have my small business planner 
And then I have my sketchbook, my little mini sketchbook that I just do loads of stuff in. Mm -hmm. Um, Then I have a generic planner for the house, which I use little and often. Yeah, That's kind of like what's going on during the month. And I mainly just do Mm -hmm. monthly spreads in those. But yeah, yeah, lots of different things for different things. I then also have a reading log. So yeah. Yeah. Um, And that's my main habit tracker. Mm -hmm. I used to have a separate habit tracker but now I've included that in my main journal. So mm-hmm. my main uh-huh. business journal. So it's just, but that that's just the time. <laughs> that's what I was just going to say. I think that's the beauty of it is there's so many different types that you can switch it up and change it constantly to oh. suit your own needs. Because like for me before, like a couple of years ago compared to now is totally different. You know, I have a kid and I'm trying to run a business and, everything is completely different to what it was before before I was just kind of routining out what I was doing what my plans were what shifts of work I had and and now it's an entirely new routine that I have um yeah and that's what I love about it because you can change it and it's just it's not like a it's it's not a one fits all it's a one fits all thing you you know you don't have to unless you like kind of manually doing it like obviously there are digital versions and stuff but oh yeah that's not even counting my digital (laughs) so I also have Uh my google calendars which I use um and I also have notion Mm -hmm. so again it just and sometimes some of it's repeated so some of the stuff that's in my notion and in my gmail calendars will also be in my journal my Mm -hmm. bullet journal business one but it's the for me it's the writing down and planning and then putting it in and then having the reminder not only just in front of me in my written book, but mm-hmm. also pinging me on my phone or my Mac yeah. or on my iPad or whatever. It helps me. Mm-hmm. And I think um, I'm neurodiverse. I have autism. So um, it's one of those things where I do need reminding. Yeah. Uh, but that's the, like you say, like the beauty of it is in my old career before I was a creative person. I've always been a creative person, but before mm-hmm. my life was creative. Mm-hmm. I was working in corporate and I was in an office and traveling all up and down the UK and doing so I was just very hectic yeah. so I needed a specific style of journaling and mm-hmm. planning whereas now I've got more time that I can do like nicer stuff and cooler stuff and yeah all the fun creative kind of and, mm-hmm. yeah so it's yeah. yeah it's flexible and I like that <clears throat> yeah and that's what I I'm very similar I do digital and um pen and paper um <clears throat> mostly similar to yourself I find that the more repetition I have in writing down what I need to do the more likely I am to remember to actually do it <laughs> um, yeah. especially in really really busy periods um where maybe like something comes up and totally changes your plans it just makes it yeah. so much easier especially like the the writing it down I feel like is like a good way to get it out of your head it reminds you about it and then also it frees up some space in your head to yeah. actually do the tasks because I find totally when it's all inside it. it my brain's too busy and I get too distracted thinking of other things um, yeah but yeah I love the I love the digital aspect of it too I use um I have a google calendar yeah a shared calendar between me and my partner um yeah. I have a notion calendar that is just my own and all our notion templates um mostly for business um and then I use my notes app on my phone too Oh yeah, my notes app. I forgot my notes app. Yeah, I, notes I'd app. be lost without it. It's so simple, I, yet just so useful. It was um my before notes. Um, so scandalous to admit, but I'm I love Max and I've always loved Max. Um, I did fine art when I was at uni, mm-hmm. um, and worked with Max then, but never had an iPhone. So when they released the yeah. iPhone, I yeah. got one. And on my first ever iPhone was the iPhone 6, which was not that long ago, really. Mm-hmm. Um, but the second I started using an iPhone, I started using the Notes app. Because before, I used to send myself text messages. Same. <laughs> and that was, that's so funny. <laughs> Isn't it weird how we all I do I still send same? myself messages on, like, Instagram and... and yeah, yeah, YouTube. yeah. I still do that. I but... my other accounts a lot. Yep. So I've got <laughs> several accounts and I go... Oh, that audio would be good for my other account mm-hmm. sent across. Or <laughs> but yeah, I think digital is great. Um, and I'm going to avoid having the discussion about AI. But mm-hmm. I think having AI and having digital is great 
for its specific uses yeah so um I haven't tried out any of the notion AI yet but I've heard really good yeah. things I think they whenever it first came out there was a test like you could test it yeah uh, but now I think it's out of beta and you have to pay for the premium subscription and yeah. I'm nearly sure but it seems like you can do quite a lot with it um I've not really yeah. tried it I don't I don't have the paid version of notion um but it seems like you can do a lot with it like it helps with grammar and sentence structure and stuff and it's which it's... helps like I think especially because of like content creating and blog writing and things although like in it as scandalous as it sounds because I'm a writer as well mm -hmm. I'm still new to writing and I'm still yeah. trying to find my pace and find my own voice and so sometimes having the digital tools actually helps yeah. and bizarrely having the split between digital now and paper for journaling mm -hmm. to bring it back to journaling yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry for my tangent um really helps because mm -hmm. it actually um it makes my paper journaling more therapeutic which is just yeah. great for mental health so for sure um and that is another um reason that I find that it is something that I want to do so much of and share so much of with other people and basically the reason why I started the whole brand um I, yeah. I remember what was maybe more than three years ago I started an in my Instagram account and at first I was kind of him and hand back and forth between what I wanted to do um and it just kept kept coming back to journaling and I think it's just because I found so many benefits with my own mental health with it that I just couldn't yeah. I needed to shout it from the rooftop so that other people would understand <laughs> Um, yeah for me it's like a meditative um thing that I do because I I have tried so many times to sit in like yoga classes and close your eyes and clear your mind and I find it impossible my brain doesn't go clear <laughs> no There's like a million tabs open um but whenever I journal and sit down it's a it's as if it's like this magic thing that happens and all of the world around me just disappears and I just zone in and I'm yeah. just on the task and it's really like it just really helps me kind of calm my nervous system a little bit, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, again, same. Um, I So I do meditate. Um, I meditate every day and it, it amazes people because especially neurodiverse people, because they're like, like you and I was exactly like you. I'm like, my mind is never going to go quiet. But mm -hmm. I've kind of accepted the fact that it never goes quiet. But one, yeah. of, the, one of the big tips that I've done, which sounds a bit contrary to what you're meant to do is I wear <laughs> earplugs <laughs> okay so I wear earplugs so that I have as minimal sound as possible mm -hmm. and sometimes I'll even so I wear beanies all the time I'll even drop my beanie down over my eyes mm -hmm. so that there's no light no nothing so I don't have any kind of I minimize the distractions yeah of the stimulus mm -hmm. and for me my meditation isn't really about kind of like losing my thoughts yeah it's just to have 15 minutes of mm -hmm. no stimulus yeah and it's been amazing and I always do that before I do my morning journal so my morning yeah. pages is, is great I do the little 15 minutes as soon as I get up um and after that 15 minutes I'm like right get the journal out and I'm mm -hmm. just right 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 yeah. because and there is stuff your brain is going to be at the point where you're ready to kind of get it all yeah. out of your, your head. But I yeah. like that too. I remember there being an ad advice I got once um, when I was in cognitive behavioral therapy. Yeah. And the person who was um, doing it with me, they told me to imagine like a cloud or a train as a thought and that it would oh, okay. pass by. Like the thought is the train and the train goes by and it's still there, but it just yes. passes through. Now, it's still I still find that very difficult, but I like the idea that you were saying of of just kind of letting letting your brain have the thoughts without all the extra stuff that's going on around you because yeah it's all the extra stimulus that's going on um and I find that the most difficult whenever I was in in classes because you're in a totally new environment so there's lots of new noises surrounded by loads of people too yeah. and people you don't know normally too so it's it's hard to get comfortable oh. but um yeah I mean I guess it's all totally like linked um the fact that you have your own like routine with it and you do your mindful your meditation yeah. first and um so is there any other part of that that is is routine for you um like when you talk about doing your bullet journaling stuff after your morning pages like do you go straight yeah. into a different part of your routine with that or so um 
generally, obviously this varies completely mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, depending on, on what's going on. But generally, during the week especially, I have a really good routine with my journals because um, as a household, it's myself and my partner. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a step-parent, but most, most of the time, the daytime is my time. Mm -hmm. So my partner leaves early. So I, as I said, I, I do my meditation, then are my morning pages. And then the second I've done my morning pages... I put on Spotify and not an advert um, <laughs> and I have a, a specific playlist in the morning that I then sit down with my bullet journal and then I just have a look at okay what do I need to do today do I need to add anything on blah 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 and then I make a list and I start my lists and yeah. um, I have like a list from the day before which I just slip into my bullet journal so mm -hmm. it's not part of the bullet journal but it's kind of like yeah. a move list that's always always there mm -hmm. um but I have regular sit downs every month which I'm now timing in with your live streams oh, because <laughs> yeah it was, it's really good like the mm -hmm. live stream um not to distract from kind of my routine but it kind of brings it in your live streams are going to be really good for me because it actually gives me the space that I need to do the nice bits of my journaling yeah. mm -hmm. whereas normally my monthly kind of sit down and trying to plan ahead for the month is very much focused on the content and it's not yeah. always do I have then the time to set it up really yeah. nice mm -hmm. it will be a lot of pencil work and just yeah. setting stuff out whereas actually having your live sessions is great because the second that's done like mm -hmm. the last one we did for February was great because I had that and mm -hmm. then I was like next day done my yeah, all not my ready to go <laughs> and that's so, what I love about the like the, the live stream and that's the intention I had behind it was to kind of almost remind people to sit down and, and take the time to do the fun yeah. part and um, because I've been doing the bullet journaling side of things the kind of more um artsy type stuff for quite a while now but starting a business and getting busy it becomes so easy to kind of drop that part off um but then I naturally find myself not using my journal as much because yeah. of that, I think, because I'm like, I'm constantly just, I end up just grabbing a piece of paper and writing a list instead. And then I find myself really flustered and it seems to be this like snowball effect. So yeah, that is one of the main reasons why I wanted to do the live streams because it was like, okay, it forces me to because this is my job. <laughs> but yeah. also it, it reminds other people too as well. So I love that. Yeah. Thanks it's nice and it's it's also just it's nice to do it with other people yeah for sure because although it's it's still therapeutic because it is still weird like it's it's very therapeutic anyway but it's nice to do just that little bit with people mm -hmm. yeah. and you kind of get inspired and mm -hmm. uh, yeah I don't know I I was a lot more experimental this month with my cover pages <laughs> look through my all of my cover page journals they are so similar so similar <laughs> you get into like it can be run. easy to do you just yeah you just get comfortable with I'm, the way you do it. I'm doing it this there we go done printed done so yeah <laughs> <laughs> so no thank you they're good awesome. but yeah it's it's a regular thing um my personal diary is a little bit more ad hoc mm -hmm. um but I do try and at least sit down twice a week Mm -hmm. to do some real and it's my personal diary is more like a personal essay because mm -hmm. I do the morning pages a lot yeah. of the stuff comes out mm -hmm. but my personal diary is now very much like a you know this is what's been happening and how I'm feeling and things during the week yes so it doesn't have to be a daily practice um mm -hmm. but I try and do that on like on a Wednesday and a Sunday just mm -hmm. to try and capture the yeah points of the week. um and then again. my personal joy, um, my personal journal is, um, again, it's very similar to my business journal. So once a month, I just set up a monthly, but then that's just a monthly page. So mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, um, I suppose for anybody maybe that's watching this and doesn't understand some of these terms, um, so morning pages was oh, yeah. <laughs> something that I think is uh, it's gonna totally go blank out of my my mind now. It was the the author who wrote the Artist's Way book, I think, came up with yeah. the whole concept of it. Yeah. And the idea um, is that you write it in the morning. I think you write three pages and it's literally just anything in your head comes out. It doesn't need to make sense. It's it just is. a stream it's, of consciousness. 
it was um, a book, a uh, self-help book, Julia Cameron. Yes, that was it. There we go. Thank which you. I, which I have read. Um, and I read it because recommended by other people. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it is basically you force yourself to write three pages. Mm -hmm. Do I always write, write three pages? Not necessarily. Um, but I, if I feel like if I'm, if I'm only like halfway during a page and I feel kind of stumped, mm -hmm. I then literally write. I don't know what I yeah. want to write about, but and that's, yeah, that's the purpose. Weird how mm -hmm. it suddenly becomes then two pages. Yeah, or oh, I've pages. been there before. You think I don't have anything else to say, and then all of a sudden, there's yeah. many, many more words. Um, yeah. so yeah, that's that's the uh, the morning pages. Um, yeah. and then I guess most of the other stuff is mostly self-explanatory. Bullet journaling, I think, is probably more commonly known, but it is um. It's a system that has evolved, I think, from the community because it started yeah. started off with writer Carl, wasn't it? Um, yeah. And it's very much like just a pen and paper system with like yeah. bullet points and, and like keys and that kind of thing. Um, and I know a lot of people still do use that. Um, but I think I use I, the keys. Yeah, I, I do. use, And I, I feel like I use a bit more of my my own version of them. I don't necessarily use writer Carl. Yeah. Version, but yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's evolved quite a lot. And I think that's that's something that I noticed on YouTube was was whenever I lo watched a lot of videos, it just kind of became a, a, a life of its own. It did. It really kind of took off, um, especially because you had the the differences between the planning community kind of almost split between yeah. and bullet journalists. Mm -hmm. And now there's much more of a general mm -hmm. bit of both because everyone... Um, either uses stickers or doesn't use stickers everyone yeah. either uses keys or doesn't use keys so there's all a kind of, it's all it doesn't really matter mm -hmm. what size your journal is or how much you want to use it everyone seems to have their own space now yeah. and there's no kind of real difference I think they all are much of a muchness it's mm -hmm. just finding the one that suits you so yeah, exactly. but, yeah. I love the journey for sure right. me too um and I think like that's why I have always gone back to using like the journaling term because I feel like it is just an umbrella term now for so many yeah. so many versions like we've talked about the morning pages and like you've got your own personal kind of more of a diary um and the digital kind of planners and calendars yeah. but then you've got things that are just a bit more kind of um I guess like a uh art artsy like you kind of yeah you lean way more into that like junk journaling or even yeah. scrapbooking or um like I have seen people who have done like prompt lists and you you basically just get all your creative stuff together you can paint you can use stickers you can use papers and yeah you know there's I've been doing that this all month of the world <laughs> like um my kind of art sketch I kind of call it my art sketchbook because mm -hmm. it's more of a hybrid junk journal art sketchbook Mm -hmm. kind of it's just where I go and play and no one ever sees it it's just for me yeah. and I either use like a prompt list or I just take something that I've been say writing in my morning pages and I think mm -hmm. oh there's a specific thing that I kind of want to work through and I'll mm -hmm. take like a word or something like that yeah. and I'll use that I love that um, and that's that's really that uh, helps tons mm -hmm. um I got that from therapy so yeah. And it's it, you find it from all sorts of different places. It is something so, I naturally gravitated towards myself too. Was whenever I felt like there was something specific that I needed to kind of work through. If I felt yeah. like the words, writing the words wasn't enough, I would just get out yeah. all of these magazines and like try to put yeah. it into a visual format. And for me, yeah. it just it just helped that way because I'm very a very visual person. Hugely, hugely mm. visual. Um. And again, like it, it, this is, it comes back to the difference between like digital and not even my notion. I try and make look a little bit nice. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's not something that I make huge effort for. Um, but yeah, I just, there's something about making journals nice and um, kind of more inspiring and motivating. Yeah. I think that is a big thing. Fun. Makes you want to look at it more, I think. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I think we're we're coming to close to the time frame here, but I wanted to ask if 
like if you could go back and say something to you like you as a beginner journaler is there anything that you can that comes to mind like someone who's unsure of where to start or just starting and they don't really know where to where to go with it um don't worry about making a mess in your journal yes that is the big one (laughs) please please do not so like I always bang on about this as an artist anyway I'm a big believer in sketchbooks I have um behind you where you are as the viewer (laughs) There is a Calax unit and there are three shelves rammed full of sketchbooks. Mm-hmm. I am a big believer in my, in, and my journals are over here. Um, so there's tons of different ways that you can journal and there's tons of beautiful planners. Mm-hmm. But don't worry if you make a mess on a page, yep. you can either rip it out, you can cover it with stuff. Um, actually, that's a really good tip. If you do make any messes, cover it up yeah find an image or some stickers to just sure. make a feature of it and just just do it yeah, embrace that. embrace it <laughs> yeah um because when I first started especially with the Erin Condrins I was because I think I've, I saw it and found it on YouTube and I'm yeah. sure that people will find you either yeah. through YouTube or Patreon or Instagram and you'll look at your spreads and go, oh, I, I need to make sure everything's perfect. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. Because yeah. to be honest, unless you post it online, no one's going to see it. Exactly. And even if you do, it doesn't need to be a masterpiece. <laughs> yeah, it really doesn't. Like yeah. some of my spreads are shocking. And it's because I, I'm i just in a rush. And yeah. sometimes I don't even do it. Like sometimes I I literally just go slap sticker just so that there's something on there. Yeah. Because... Mm-hmm. I'm and a lot of it will just be okay I'm just going to use some color pencils yeah. to just underline stuff mm-hmm. just so there's a, a bit of, of highlighters color. that's it yeah um, no, I'm the same it be a masterpiece I, at all. I think it can um it can be easy to look at people online and think that it needs to be perfect because you're seeing this like edited version um yeah. even with my own spreads you know but there's a whole lot of stuff that people maybe don't realize or see and I've started to try and show that a little bit more in like some of my videos where you know if I've made a mistake and I have to cover it up I try I try to show it because you know everybody's human yeah it's gonna look perfect and the more yeah. you do it the more fun you're gonna have with it and the fun part is the most important part really yeah that's that is that's the whole point I think mm-hmm. it's just it's taking time out of your day yes it's great for planning yes it's great for habit tracking and like even like so I I read when I'm putting my books into my reading log Mm -hmm. that's great but don't feel bad if you don't do it yeah like it's fine purpose really I've got old journals that have been left and I'm like it's fine it's just paper Mm -hmm. it's fine exactly (laughs) (laughs) it's not meant to stress us out it's meant to help us no exactly Um, so coming to the end, I just uh, wanted to say thank you for joining oh, me for my very, you. very first podcast. I it know, it's amazing. exciting. I could probably talk for ages and ages, but of course we are on a time limit here. <laughs> um, yes. But I wanted to give you the opportunity to plug some of your social medias, anything that's upcoming, what you're doing. Okay. Um. So uh, first of all, thank you. And I love the fact that I'm the first one. That's so nice. <laughs> um. So yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's been really fun. Um. I could talk about journals and planning all day. Um. You can find me everywhere. Um. Kitty creates rainbows, and that's Kitty with a K. So mm-hmm. Kitty creates the rainbows. Um. My website is kittycreatesrainbows.com. Um, and I have a Patreon where we do all sorts of things. So I, because I'm an artist and a gamer and a writer, there are lots of different sections of my Patreon. So you can go and explore that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm on YouTube and I upload studio vlogs and yeah, you can basically just find me anywhere. Um, I go live a lot if you're interested in watching me paint or draw want to ask me any questions around that um and yeah that's pretty much it I think yeah well wherever I'm putting this uh podcast I will be making sure to put everything in the links or the descriptions wherever it is so if anybody is watching this then you can check out all of Kat's details below and follow them everywhere (laughs) thank you very much so thank you everybody for watching for the very first episode and I hope you tune in for the next one bye Thank you.
Thank you.